when the woman at the well met Jesus, she ran to the village and she said to the people, come see a man. <laughs> Likewise, I can say to you, come hear a man. He's the pastor for District 3 of Seventh-day Adventists in St. Kitts. He's a family man. He's an educated man. But most of all, he's a man that loves the Lord. I can say to you right now, come, hear a man, Pastor Theodore Smith. Almighty God, we give you thanks for your goodness and your mercy and for bringing us here for this special session tonight as we continue to delve into your word to know what you have in store for your people. We thank you for the privilege of being able to learn more about you and about these prophecies. We pray that you'd be in a special way with the speaker as we allow the Holy Spirit to guide us into every truth revealed within your word. Bless each participant tonight. Bless all of the presentations. Pray that you would continue to be with us and help and guide us and keep us faithful to you so that even as we learn more about you, we put them into practice in our daily lives and so that men and women may see that indeed we are your children and may come to love and serve you more. Bless us and keep us for the rest of this service, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Good night once again to my viewing friends. It's good to have you joining us at the Jesus is the Answer Prophecy Panorama. God has been mighty good to us out here night after night, and tonight is no different. 
We want to remind you to invite your friends. So perhaps you need to stop at this time and call someone. Remind them that Jesus is the answer. Prophecy Panorama is about uh, to kick off. We ask uh, that uh, you will tune your hearts in and encourage somebody to listen because we need the answer to life's questions today. Challenges around us, uh, 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 disaster, uncertainty in life. And so we have Jesus as the answer. So come, tell somebody uh, that Jesus is still the answer. And tonight our topic, Reflections of a Madman. Reflections of a Madman. We have so many mad people in our world today. And we want to look at the reflections of this madman. Because it may make a difference in your life. And so we, we go back to scripture. Matthew 28 and, uh, and verse 20. Uh, teaching us to observe all things whatsoever I commanded unto you. And lo, I am with you even unto the end of the age. Reflections of a madman. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, once again we come to you. We ask you for divine wisdom. Speak to us. Speak to me as I, as I seek to deliver your word to your people tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Tonight as we focus on uh, on uh, this, uh, this important topic. I want you to stay with me. God patiently works with people. His long-suffering and patience is graphically illustrated in the book of Daniel through his attempts to reach Nebuchadnezzar with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Repeatedly, Nebuchadnezzar appears to make strides in the right direction, uh, uh, but then he relapses. Finally, in chapter 4, God is forced to take drastic steps. As a result, it seems that Nebuchadnezzar acknowledges the true God. We must never forget that God is patient with us as he was with Nebuchadnezzar. Even though we slip and fall, he still loves us. He wants to save us more than we want to save ourselves or we want to be saved. As you study Nebuchadnezzar's story, we pray that you will be drawn closer to Jesus. Remember that everything in the book of Daniel, including this story of Nebuchadnezzar, is focusing on the last days. Uh, the only people who will overcome in the final days are those who have had a deep personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Individuals who have been truly converted to God. My friends, before Daniel gives us the graphic details of last day events in the prophetic section, he makes certain that we understand the need of conversion. Conversion, my friends, is very important in salvation. Uh, the only people who will overcome in the final days are those who are developing a personal relationship with Jesus Christ now. As we, as we look into Daniel chapter 4, Daniel chapter 4, it says, Nebuchadnezzar the king unto all people. Now Nebuchadnezzar, now the madman is now telling his story. Nebuchadnezzar to all peoples, nations and languages that dwell in all the earth. Peace be multiplied unto you. What did Nebuchadnezzar hope to reveal through his testimony? In verses 2 and 3, he says, I thought it good to show the signs and wonders that the high God has wrought toward me. How great are his signs and how mighty are his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and his dominion is from generation to generation. My friends, uh, Nebuchadnezzar is saying uh, uh, that he wants us to know that God is a God of God. He wants us to know that God is a patient God. He's a mighty God. He was long-suffering to Nebuchadnezzar and he's long-suffering to us as well. I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at rest in mine house and flourishing in my palace. I saw a dream which made me afraid, and the thoughts upon my bed and the visions of my head troubled me. 
Therefore made I a decree to bring in all the wise men of Babylon before me, that they might make known unto me the interpretation of the dream. I want, you, I want to let you know that somehow Nebuchadnezzar was a sort, a sort of a, you know, a human in a sense. So you, you know, not many men will say they are afraid or they were afraid. But Nebuchadnezzar said he saw this dream and he was afraid. He was terri terrified. You see, as men, we are mortal. We don't say that we are afraid. We always think we have everything under control. But ne Nebuchadnezzar was, was bold enough and humble enough to say he was afraid. And so he called all his trusted men, uh, men in Babylon, his wise men, his astrologers and so on. Because at this time, whereas he remembered the dream, he thought then something would have happened. You see, when, in chapter 2, when he did not remember the dream, uh, the magician said that you give us, we can't tell you, only the gods can do that. But this time, he remembered the dream, and so he called them again. You see, sometimes we go through experiences in our lives and we don't learn. Nebuchadnezzar called them back then, and they could not, and so he turned to Daniel. This time, he called them again. All the wise men of Babylon. Uh, no, they could not interpret it. They could not interpret the dream. Then came in the magicians, he said, and the astrologers, and the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers. And I told the dream before them, but they did not make known unto me the interpretation thereof. But I want to let you know tonight that God was discrediting the wise men. He was, he was allowing Nebuchadnezzar to see there was nothing special about these men. They were only making up things over the years. But the true God of heaven knows the future. The true God of heaven knows everything about us. He knows how the world will end. He knows every minute detail about the future. In Daniel chapter 4 verses 8 and 9, uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar continues. But at the last Daniel came in before me whose name was Belteshazzar, according to the name of my God, and in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. And before him I told the dream, saying, O Belteshazzar, master of the magicians, because I know that the spirit of the holy gods is in thee, and no secret troubleth thee, tell me the visions of my dream that I have seen and the interpretation thereof. There are so many things in this text that we can focus on. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar is now saying, after his wise men failed, Nebuchadnezzar is saying, I know that the spirit of the holy gods, if you, if you are familiar with the Hebrew, you recognize that what Nebuchadnezzar is saying here, he wasn't necessarily referring to the God of heaven. He was referring, he, he was referring to his concept of God, and so he says, the gods. Daniel 4, 10 to 18. We have there the summary. He saw a, th a, a tree whose height was great. The tree grew, was strong. The height reached unto heaven and the sight to the end of all the earth. The tree was to be cut or hewn down. The stump was left in the ground with a band of iron or brass. The stump was to be wet with the dew of heaven. Let his portion be with the beast in the grass of the earth. Let his heart be changed from a man's and let a beast's heart be given unto him. And finally, till seven times pass over him. And so when you read ver verses, verses 10 to 18, this is what you will find there. But the question that we need to ask, what was the purpose of this dream? Nebuchadnezzar saw the dream. He is now relating his experience. What was the purpose of this dream? That the living may know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men and give it to whomever he will. Only when people allow God to rule their lives are they truly converted. 
You are not convert, truly converted is if God is not ruling your life. You may do some things uh, that are good. You, you may do some things that others may require of you. But that does not mean you are totally converted. When you surrender all to Jesus Christ, when you follow his, his leading in your life, then you can be truly converted. How did Daniel respond when he heard the dream? You see, my friends, we need to understand that God revealed himself to us in different ways. Daniel is now standing once again before Nebuchadnezzar. And in verse 19 he says, Then Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, was astonished for one whole hour, and his thoughts troubled him. The king spake and said, Belteshazzar, let not the dream or the interpretation thereof trouble thee. Belteshazzar answered and said, My lord, the dream be to them that hate thee, and the interpretation thereof to thine enemies. I want you to understand the context here. For me, when I read this text, and as I read it over and over again, I am asking myself the question, uh, if Nebuchadnezzar was so enamored by the dream uh, that he could, have, he could have sat before Daniel for one whole hour. The Bible says when, ne when Daniel heard the dream and it was time for him to interpret it, he just stood there for one whole hour. The king realized that there was something wrong with the dream. The king realized it and the king said, don't be afraid. Daniel must, uh, must somehow in his mind knew that if he told the king about this dream, perhaps that he could be killed. But he mustered the courage after the king told him, tell me the dream. Don't despair. Let me know what you have in mind. Tell me what the dream is. Give me the interpretation. Whatever it is, I'm willing to accept it. And now Daniel began to interpret the dream. In Daniel 4, 24 to 26. He continues, This is the interpretation of O King, and this is the decree of the Most High, which is come upon my Lord the King, that they shall drive thee from men, and thy, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field, and they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and they shall wet thee with the dew of heaven, and seven times shall pass over thee, till thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and give it to whomsoever he will. And whereas they commanded to leave the stump of the roots, thy kingdom shall be sure unto thee, and uh, that thou shalt have known that the heaven do rule. What a terrible prediction. Nebuchadnezzar became a madman. A terrible prediction. Nebuchadnezzar was told that uh, this is interpretation. He, he was told that he was going to become mad. But the assurance that he had is that the kingdom will be his. After he has served his time as a madman, the kingdom will be restored unto him. I thank God, my friends, tonight that in spite of the fact that we pay for our sins, in spite of the fact that things happen to us, God says, I can restore you. I can give you back what belongs to you. But you need to understand that God rules in the fears of man. You need to understand that God loves us. He wants the best for us. But our choices have caused us to turn against God. And, and the Bible says our sins have separated us separated us from the love of God. What did God hope Nebuchadnezzar will learn through this experience of insanity? What did uh, God uh, hope to uh, Nebuchadnezzar will learn uh, as he became a madman uh, to, the, to that experience? Uh, God wanted Nebuchadnezzar to learn that the Most High 
ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth to whomsoever he will. He wanted Nebuchadnezzar to know uh, that he is God. He wanted Nebuchadnezzar to know that he rules in the face of man, that he sets up king and he takes down king. And he wants Nebuchadnezzar to know that one day his kingdom will come to an end and at any time his kingdom can be taken away from him. Nebuchadnezzar must learn the basic gospel truth. He must be willing, uh, he must be willing for God to rule his life. It is God who dethrones kings, uh, not man. Uh, no nation can dethrone king. It is God who dethrones kings. My friends, it doesn't matter how much we jump, how much we run. It doesn't matter what we say. People don't dethrone kings. When God says it is time to go, it is time to go. When you look around the world today, when you listen to the politics of the world today, my friends, I want to remind you, it is God who set up kings and God who takes down kings. So it doesn't matter how much how you feel. It doesn't matter your political affiliation. I want to let you know tonight that it is God who sets up and takes down. Nebuchadnezzar must learn that lesson. And so we too must learn that lesson today. What was Daniel's counsel to Nebuchadnezzar? That is the question that we need to answer today. What was Daniel's counsel? Uh, Daniel 4.27 says, Wherefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable unto thee, and break off thy sins by righteousness, and thine iniquities by showing mercy to the poor, if it may be a lengthening of thy tranquility. I want you to understand, my friend, uh, that, that Daniel was saying to the king, as, as, the wise man, as the wise man he was, Daniel was saying to the king, I want you to know something. You, you need to get it right. You need only to recognize that God is God. The only way that, that you are going to avoid the tragedy before you is to turn your heart completely to God. Daniel is saying to him, King, you have sinned against God. You have, you have iniquity in your life. You have been doing things contrary to the will of God. You have been taking advantage of the poor. Make it right now if you want to maintain your kingdom. If you want to have long life and peace, you need to do something differently. You need to surrender to God. Tonight, my friends, only by total, total commitment to the will of God. And, uh, and, and God working in, in his life, will he be able to avert the coming calamity upon him? Nebuchadnezzar must acknowledge God as the rightful ruler of his life. He wasn't willing to accept it. He wasn't willing to turn to that. In other words, Neb Daniel is saying to Nebuchadnezzar, you need to repent. Repent, Nebuchadnezzar. Repent, O king. Repent, submit, and surrender to God. You need to confess your faults before God. Confess your sins before God. Accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Remember he died for you. He wants to save you. Brothers and sisters, what we need to do is to accept the love of Jesus Christ in our lives. Jeremiah 18 and 7 to 10 uh, states, At what instance I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to pluck up and to pull down and to destroy it, if that nation against whom I have pronounced turn from their evil, I will repent of the evil that I thought to do unto them. And at what instant I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to build and to plant it. If it do evil in my sight, that it obey not my voice, then I will repent of the good. Wear it. I said, I will benefit them. In other words, my friends, the word for us today is repent. Repent. Paul says, repent, repent, repent for the kingdom of, of heaven is at hand. John the Baptist, uh, John the Baptist cried out, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent, my friends. Repent. We are in the closing scenes of earth's history. We need to repent, surrender our hearts to God. God does not save a person in sin. He saves us from our sins. God saves mankind from sin. He does not save us in, in our sins. 
My friends, tonight God wants to save you, but you are doubling, you're holding on to some darling juicy sin. God is saying to you, He cannot save you that way. You need to let go. Let that sin go. If we are going to be saved, it has to be on God's term, not our term. God, God wants to save you totally. He says, come. Come now and let us reason together. Come. Come. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Friends, it is all about salvation. God wants to save us. And he will not save us in, in the state that we are in. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Salvation is a gift, my friends. It's a gift from God. And Paul continues the strain in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. What must a person do to accept Jesus Christ? What must a person do to accept this free gift of salvation? All that God has offered to his life, all we have to do is just to accept Jesus through faith. Faith, my friends, is the key. In Acts 16, 30 and 31, uh, uh, it is said, And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? The jailer is asking the question uh, after he had experienced uh, the God uh, through the life of these, of these apostles. What must I do to be saved? And then the resounding answer came. And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. My friends, all you have to do tonight is just to believe on Jesus Christ. Surrender to him. Let go of your past sins. Give him that place in your heart. But I want to ask you the question, what happened to Nebuchadnezzar one year later? You see, my friends, as Nebuchadnezzar was confronted with the dream, uh, he was told what was going to happen. Somehow Nebuchadnezzar in his mind realized that, you, you know, this may, have been, this may have been a joke. But the word of God tells us in, in Daniel chapter 4 and verses 28 to 31, all this came upon the king Nebuchadnezzar. At the end of 12 months, he walked in the palace of uh, the kingdom of Babylon. The king spake and said, Is not this the great Babylon that I have built uh, for the house of the kingdom uh, uh, by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty? While the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken, the kingdom is departed from thee. Sad words, my friends. Sad words, one year before, Daniel told him, King, you need to repent. You need to repent and turn to the God of heaven. You need to recognize that he owns the fears of man. He set up kings and he takes down kings. King Nebuchadnezzar, you need to repent. Turn your life to God if you want to experience tranquility. If you want to hold the kingdom for a longer time. If you want to live in peace, repent and give your life to Jesus Christ. And now Nebuchadnezzar is saying, this is the great Babylon that I have built. I, I, I. And now the words of doom came. The kingdom is departed from you. In verse 33, uh, the word says, The same hour was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar. And he was driven from men and did eat grass as oxen. And his body was wet with the dew of heaven. Till his ears were grown like eagle's feathers and his nails like bird's claws. Friend, the chapter closes with Nebuchadnezzar taking a stand for Jesus Christ. In verse 37, he says, I, Nebuchadnezzar, now I am no longer a madman. I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the King of heaven, all whose works are truth and his ways judgment, and those that walk in pride he is able to abase. The madman is now reflecting on his life. 
reflecting on, on, his, on the folly of his past life. And he's now saying uh, to those whom he's given counsel to, he's saying now to his nation, I honor and extol God. He has brought me to my knees. I'm now humbled before him. Those who walk before him in pride will be humbled. Those who walk before him in pride, he says he's going to abase. My friends, I'm saying to us tonight, God is saying to us, let us humble ourselves before the mighty hand of God and he will sustain us. Like Nebuchadnezzar, would you like to accept God's free gift of salvation? Just accept his love and repent of your sins. And he says, I am going to give you eternal life. Turn away from your sins. Open the doors of your hearts and, and let him come in. He's there knocking on your heart's door. He's saying, it is time for me to come in. It is almost time for the world to come. I want to come in so I can stop with you. I can make life better for you. I can give you peace that the world does not understand. I can give you peace that passes all understanding. Will you pray with me tonight that God will give you that peace? Will you pray now to accept Jesus uh, as your Lord and Savior? Will you pray now with me uh, to give God a center stage in your life and receive God and his peace, like the peace that he has given to Nebuchadnezzar? Will you pray with me tonight? God wants to give you peace. He wants to give you salvation. He wants to give you a future that is bright. So will not you pray with me? will not you pray with me tonight? Loving Father, I recognize that I am a sinner. I recognize, Lord, that without you, I am nothing. And so tonight, Father, I'm saying to you, we want you to come into our hearts. We want to surrender our all to you. We want to accept this free gift of salvation. Lord, give us uh, the hunger and the thirsting, the thirsting after righteousness. May we be able to accept this free gift of salvation because it is not of works lest any of us will could boast. And not, uh, not anything that we have attained in life uh, let, except we boast. Father, we pray tonight that your Holy Spirit will come in our lives and that your Holy Spirit will wash away our sins and take those things away from us that are unlike you. Those who are struggling, Lord, to surrender everything to you. I pray, Lord, that you'll give them the strength to do so. Maybe they're holding on to things, things uh, that are just holding them back. Things that would not satisfy. They have been seeking satisfaction. They have been seeking peace and attention and love in all the wrong places. And so tonight, Father, we're saying, we want to turn to you, Jesus, who is the answer to find peace, to find love, to find fulfillment. Come into our hearts, Father, and give us peace. Free us from ourselves. Free us from from our past. And may we live renewed life with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Yes, friends, tonight, as we come to the end of of tonight's meeting, I just want to remind you to invite a friend tomorrow. Let them know that Jesus is still the answer. Jesus is the answer. Is the answer. Uh, prophecy panorama will continue, and tomorrow we'll be looking at the topic divine graffiti. You can't afford to miss it. Remember to tell somebody uh, that there is hope in Jesus Christ. We have the answer. Jesus is the only answer. He is the answer for all the world today. And if you have enjoyed, if you have enjoyed the messages, if you are blessed, remember to tell somebody. See you tomorrow night. And I pray that God will give you a, a good night rest. And may you be able to come and join us again as we look at the divine graffiti as we come closer to the end of time. God bless, and have a blessed night.
The family. The family.